You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never ending assistance in Ramah Bishem Israel 5783, 2023. This week's Parsha is Parsha Zra'e. And just like last week, we spoke about the fact that there was a connection between Parsha Vaischan and Parsha Ekev. So here this week, the Medrash also points out the connection between the end of last week's Parsha and the beginning of this week's Parsha. And so I'd like to read to you the Psukim. We'll start actually with this week's parsha. Bracha uklala. Pasik tells us, Behold, Moshe Rabbeinu says, I am placing in front of you today two different possibilities, a blessing or a curse. The blessing comes how? How do we access blessings? How do we access everything that we want in life? And we're going to see more what this looks like, how this manifests. But how do we get blessings? If we listen to the commandments of Hashem, your God, which I am commanding you today, how does a person, heaven forbid, undergo curses? What causes that? It's very simple, it's straightforward. The curse comes upon a person. Negative things come upon a person. Why? When we disconnect from Hashem, when we disconnect from spirituality, when we disconnect from God. If we don't listen to the commandments, v'sartem and aderech. If heaven forbid, we turn away from the path. Asher neichim mitzav eschem ayim that I am commanding you today. Oleches acharei lahim acherim asher lo yidatem. Following after the 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 uh, idols, the idolatry of the nations. So can go on to talk about when you come to Eretz Yisrael. So there's going to be a placement. This is important. We're going to place the blessings on the mountain har grizim on this mountain of grizim. There are two twin mountains. You place the blessings on one mountain, you place the curses on the other mountain, Har Eval, and the Pesukim go on to talk about the fact that we have to make sure that when it comes to idolatry, we have to destroy all the idolatry in the land of Israel. There's one place that we go. There's one place, in, in the times of the Mishkan, it was, it was to Shiloh, in the times of the Beis Hamikdash, when we had a temple, it was Jerusalem. There's a place that we go to serve Hashem, and... We are not to serve idolatry, we are not to serve anything else. We are to choose life, we are to choose blessings, and not, heaven forbid, choose curses. Now what do these look like? What do the blessings look like? So, and it, I want to mention here that this is Moshe Rabbeinu's final speech, and think about it from Moshe Rabbeinu's perspective. Moses is standing there, Jewish people are about to enter Israel. It's the moment of the beginning of their destiny, really, starting their, their life in their own country, with, with the Torah as their guide. This is a, an incredible moment. So Moshe Rabbeinu has to speak now a speech that's going to last for thousands of years. Right? We're still reading this speech today. But what is the central message of his speech? This is the message. Keep the Torah. Keep the mitzvahs. Obviously, where? In Eretz Yisrael. In the land of Israel. That's the main place for the Torah to be kept. Now, I'd like to bring you back I'd like to bring you back to the end of last week's Parsha because, as we'll see in the Medrash together, that is that is really the foundation of what we say at the beginning of this week's Parsha. And the Pasuk says it like this. It's only a few Pesukim back. It's chapter 11, verse 22. And we just read chapter 11, verse 26. So it's four verses back. Kim shamor tishmarun as kol ha-mitzvah azais asher neichi mitzvah la Hashem says, if you shall keep if you shall certainly keep, if you keep it all the way, Shamor Tishmarun is a double language, you keep it, you keep it, all of this mitzvah, all of this commandment that I am commanding you today. What does the commandment look like? Notice it's singular, right? In Re'ei, we spoke about the commandments. You shall listen to the commandments. Plural. Here it's singular. And we're going to Try to understand why it's singular here. But what does it mean to keep the commandments? It means to love Hashem, to go in His ways, to attach yourself to Him. Then what's going to be the result? You will conquer all of the nations that are there in the land of Israel. You will inherit nations that are much larger than you. So this is a secret, by the way, how we conquer the land of Israel. When do we succeed? Right? There's a process we've been going through for the last 100 years, 200 years or so. 
right? The Talmidei Hagra, the students of the Gro came in the early 1800s to start the process, and here we are 200 years later, in the thick of the process, 7 million Jews strong. But what is it that, that is the foundation of our ability to conquer the land of Israel? That such that every place that we go, everywhere our footsteps, it will be ours. Min Hamidbar from the from the desert and all the way to the north, in Anar and Har Pras, all the way from the Euphrates River, Vadayama Acharain, Yegvulchem, down to the to the last sea, the Mediterranean maybe, or maybe it's the Gulf of Eilat. Lo nobody will stand before you, no one will stand in your way. Your fear will be upon all of the all of the nations of the world. When you walk in that land and you keep the mitzvahs, you follow the commandments. Moshe Rabbeinu is not just telling us, "Oh, here's a nice set of rules for you to follow. This will make your life good." This is how you become powerful. This is where your spiritual energy comes from. It comes from keeping the Torah. It comes from following the commandments meticulously. But interestingly, one commandment, which is the commandment here, it says, It's called HaMitzvah Hazois. All of this mitzvah. What's this mitzvah? And how does it contrast? Contrast to the mitzvos, the multiple commandments we're supposed to keep, which are mentioned in the beginning of Parshas Re'e. It says the Medrash like this. This is in Parsha Dalad, section Dalad. Dover Acher Maxib Lo Malam and Ha'inin Kiim Shemar Tishmarun. Ma always call a mitzvah hazoy. So Medrash asks, what's the single mitzvah that really includes all of the other mitzvahs? Because that's the idea, right? If you could have a single mitzvah, but really you need to keep all of the mitzvahs, right? But what's the mitzvah that includes all the other mitzvahs? So there's a few pshatim. I'm going to focus on the first pshat. The first understanding. Amr Ablevi Zil Shema. This is the mitzvah of reading Shema. We do it every day, twice a day. When we go to sleep, we say Shema. Shema Yisrael Hashem Lokeinu Hashem Echad. V'yahavtes Hashem Lokecho. All of these verses that speak about our love for Hashem, our obligations to Hashem. If we keep the Torah, we will be rewarded. It's all encapsulated in the mitzvah of Kriya Shema, of reading the Shema. This mitzvah of Kriya Shema, we'll see more about it, We'll see what it does. We'll see how it does it. But the mitzvah of Kriya Shema. And what is Kriya Shema really? What is the essence of Kriya Shema? Says the Eitz Yosef, Shukabolis Malchus Shemaim. With Kriya Shema we say, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. We say, Hashem, our God, Hashem is one. There is one God. This is His will. It's called the Torah. These are His commandments. I am accepting upon myself through Kriya Shema. And this is an all-inclusive mitzvah includes all of the mitzvahs because as soon as I say I'm ready to do it I make my, God my king it's all there it's all there it's all included in that commitment why does the Basik say all of this commandment all of the commandments are included in all of this commandment because when I make God my king, as we've said, when I make God my king, I want to reiterate, when I make God my king, now I've committed to doing His will, to keeping His Torah, to all of the mitzvahs. And that is how I get spiritual power. Now listen to this. This is a little later in the same Medrash. I want to tell you something scary. It's scary. And we have to know what this means. We have to understand this. But it says like this. Every single small area within the physical realm has thousands of mazikim. What are mazikim? They are negative spiritual forces. We know what malachim are, right? We've heard of the angels. Angels are positive spiritual forces. We're going to talk about how how we get the malachim, how do we get the angels on our side, and how do we get rid of the negative spiritual forces, call them demons. Not exactly the right translation, but we could call them demons. It says the Medjish, every single small area of reality, of the physical realm, has thousands upon thousands of demons that are there. 
וכל אחד פרמי נסונה בפונו של יאבי באודם ויאזק. Every one of them has a mask. Because we don't want these demons to look at us. If the demons look at us, if they take off their mask and they see us, they will damage us. Now, what, what enables them to take off the mask? What, enables, what, what protects us from them? When a person's sins cause it, a person's sins, that means I disconnect from Hashem, I do something wrong. The mazik, the demon, sees that now I can get this person. Person sins, they don't, we don't realize it. We do something wrong. We disconnect ourselves from Hashem. And now we give power to forces of evil, to the, to the demons, as it were. We have to know what these things are. We have to understand what it means. And then, person sins, he takes off the mask. The demon takes off his mask and he causes damage to the person. When I do an Avera, when I do something wrong, I disconnect from Hashem, I cause myself spiritual damage, which can manifest in physical damage. The Pesach says, I, through my connection to Hashem, Pesach in Telem in Psalms chapter 55 verse 19, Hashem redeems my soul. From, from all of these negative spiritual forces, because when I do what's right, when I do mitzvahs, when I connect myself to Hashem, I have many more spiritual forces that are by my side than the negative spiritual forces that are also there. So I can win the battle. I can win. There's a battle going on inside of all of us and inside of the entire world, throughout the entire world. Who are these that are the spiritual forces that are with me? Mihem elu hamalachim shemeshamrenes adam. You want protection. You want spiritual protection. You want physical protection. You get it by strengthening your angels, by fulfilling the Torah. When we keep the mitzvahs, when we connect to spiritual to spirituality to Hashem, we strengthen the angels, the power of the angels that are around us, and they protect us. And the demons can't take off their masks. Amr Rabbi Yishuv ben Levi. The Medrash finishes off and says, Amr Rabbi Yishuv ben Levi, Akanya, Malachas l'mnei Adam, Vakurais is cars in the fun of. The human being, we all have, every single person has its Selam Elohim. We have a, a spiritual, a piece of God in us, a somehow, you have to know what this means, because God doesn't have any form. But somehow each and every one of us has a holographic imitation of Hashem, we call it our soul, inside of us. We have a piece of Hashem inside of us, and that spiritual representation of Hashem, which is ours, uniquely ours, each one of us is a spiritual manifestation of God in this world. That spirituality, that soul, walks in front of us, right? and we strengthen that soul. Besides the strengthening the angels, we strengthen our soul, and that soul walks out in front of us as we go through the world. And it announces, it makes an announcement. Sorry, the, the soul doesn't make an announcement. All of the spiritual forces around announce, watch out, a human being is coming through, a soul, a reflection of Hashem, a reflection of God is coming through here. The demons themselves have no choice but to move away, make room for the human being who has a soul and who is protected by angels. Amos, I, now when is this true? And this is the bottom line of it, and this is the point of it. This is, by the way, what we're reading here, of course, is we don't know exactly what this means. We can't know exactly what this means, but it's a, it's a hamchasha. It's a little bit of trying to understand how it works. How does it work? When I fulfill the mitzvah, says the Medrash, I get spiritual protection. I get angels to protect me. All of these negative spiritual forces have no power. When? When I keep the Torah. That's what our Pasuk means. Our Pasuk says there are blessings and there are curses. What are blessings? What are curses? Oh, says the Medrash. This is what it means. 
There's a blessing. You know what the blessings look like? It looks like spiritual protection, angels surrounding you. Your, your spiritual essence announces or causes all of the forces of nature, all of the, forces, the spiritual and physical forces of nature to announce, here comes a protected human being. Klala, and the opposite, heaven forbid, where the mask is taken off of the negative spiritual forces, where they are allowed to cause damage, heaven forbid, if we don't listen to the Torah. If we don't listen to the Torah. Now how do we listen to the Torah? Says the Medrash, it's one mitzvah that reminds us and keeps us on track. Recommit. Recommit right now that there's one Hashem, His commandments, He is the King, His commandments I shall follow. That's what we do every day, twice a day, when we say Kriya Shema. Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. We draw to ourselves through this incredibly powerful statement of commitment, all of the angels. We draw to ourselves a pronouncement, an announcement. Here comes a human being. Here comes an exalted reflection of God. Says the Marzu, I'd like to read to you the Marzu. Absolutely beautiful. I am a Medrash Rabbah, B'mid Bar Rabbah, Parsha Chaf, I don't know if we'll get to it, I do have it open here. It's also incredibly beautiful. I'd like to read to you first the Marzu, we'll see if there's time for reading that other Medrash. Sha'al Yideh Kriya Shema Nishmar Menam As we saw, when we say Kriya Shema, we protect ourselves from all negative spiritual forces. V'cheinu be'brachas tafhei. It's also Gemara and Brachas. Hu ve'bi'alkut i'ayv. It's brought elsewhere, Medrash and Eiv. The Yishmerecha and Amazikin. This protects you from Amazikin. The Zeu ki im tish tish ki im shamor tish marun is called a mitzvah hazais. What does it mean? We're going over this. We're reviewing this. We're trying to understand it. What does it mean if you will keep this mitzvah? I know mitzvah achas shehu iker shakol a mitzvus. What is the one mitzvah which is the main, the essence, the root of all the other mitzvahs? It's the belief that there is one Hashem and I accept upon myself His absolute kingship. Like we find, the Gemara Makis says that there's one mitzvah. Chavakuk summed up all of the mitzvahs into one, into one of the mitzvahs. He says this mitzvah contains all the other mitzvahs. So what is it? V'tzadik be'amunasa yichyeh, that the righteous individual lives by his faith. What does it mean? He lives with the reality that Hashem is all there is, and that I am His servant. Because of Shem beparsha Shema Yisrael, as we mentioned before, the Marzu says. That in Shema Yisrael it says, "Yatas Hashem lekecha," right? In in the Kriya Shema that we read, in this reading, this daily recommitment that we say, we say, "You should love Hashem your God." These words should be on your heart. It's a reminder. It's a recommitment. Here too, it also speaks about the fact that we're obligated to love Hashem. Right, we have the parsha shekosibah gam kein asher noichim mitzavah eschem ayim laavas Hashem lekeichem. The obligation to love Hashem, to you know, we're supposed to serve Hashem out of love. We're supposed to do it because He's our loving Father. He cares about us. He loves us, and we want to we want to make Him happy. Okay. It also says over there, it's called a mitzvah hazoi, so sure, noich mitzvah eschem la soi, so le ava, vizel, amitas das, Rabbi Levi, shedeish ha mitzvah hazoi, al kriya shema. This is what Rabbi Levi really means. This is the depth of what he means, and he says that there's one mitzvah that includes them all, and that's kriya shema. Ma shakosav kim shamor tishmurun ki ilu ksi. Okay. That's that. And I want to share with you one more thing that the Marzu says, which is incredible, and has to do with. We we don't see what's going on. We don't understand the ramifications of our words, of our thoughts, of our feelings, of our of our statements. 
We don't realize what a mitzvah means. We don't understand. We don't see it. But there's there are spiritual beings all around us. We are completely surrounded by them. There are angels, and there are, I don't want to say the word demons, I don't like the word, call them, again, negative spiritual forces. They're all around us, and through our actions, through our deeds, through our statements, we give strength to those spiritual forces that are around us, much as we place the blessing on a certain mountain, place the, the curses on a different mountain, it's a recognition of the fact that we affect the physical realm through our actions. We have an incredible power through our statements, through our commitments to Hashem, through our recognition that He is all there is. What does it look like? Again, we said it looks like incredible, incredible amount of power to the malachim, to the angels. He says, where do we get this idea that I give that there's angels and they I give them power? There's a pasuk. It's in the set in Second Kings chapter six, sixteen. The pasuk speaks about the fact that there was a there was a, a big army that had come to face off. I believe it was from Ashur from Assyria had come to face off with the Jewish people. They had surrounded and and placed the siege upon the Jews. And the Navi was told that you need not worry. It looks like they're so powerful and we are so weak. But we have so many more uh, army personnel. We have so many more soldiers because we have spiritual soldiers. Rabbim asher itonam yasher oisam Susim v'rechev esh svivas Elisha. Right? It was Elisha Hanavi. He was able to he was able to see with a spiritual sight that he was surrounded by protective spiritual forces. Susim uh, um, fiery horses and 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 chariots. That's how they appeared. The the malachim, the angels who were protecting them. That's what it means here in the pasuk when it says, "I have more. I have so many more with me. I have, I have more on my side. I have so many more for spiritual forces on my side." Right? We the pasuk we say also every day. They have horses. They have missiles. They have who knows what they have. I don't even want to know what they have. But it doesn't matter what they have. Because as long as we are committed to Torah, as long as we have Hashem on our side, the, the, oh, He sends all of His angels to protect us, to, to help us, to succeed, to conquer the land of Israel, make way. Just like on the spiritual realm, and this is, this is amazing, just like in the spiritual realm, the, the negative spiritual forces say, make way for the human being, make way for, for His protective angels. It's the same exact thing in a parallel way. As we saw in the Psukim, the nations of the world, when they see us doing what's right, they don't know why. They can't understand it. They make way. When they see that Hashem's name is called upon us when we are doing what's right, they are afraid of us. It's only when we're not doing what's right that they have any hava amina that they could entertain the thought that they could, heaven forbid, have any power over us. And I'd like to just read to you, we'll finish off here with this little piece in the Medrash, in Bamid Baraba, this is in Parsha Chaf, the end of section, towards the end of section Chaf. It says like this, it's talking about the the bracha of Bilam. He said, Hein am yokum. The Jewish people are like a lion that gets up. There's no other nation in the world like the Jewish people when they're asleep so they're not involved in Torah and Mitzvahs when they get up they get up like a lion what's the first thing that we do we grab the Mitzvah of Kriya Shema we say we make God our King we become like lions 
Eretz Lamasa Lamaton. And we take Hashem with us in all of our business dealings, in all of the ways that we go. This is an incredible thing. Shema, Kriya Shema is an incredibly powerful tool, spiritual tool to protect us, physical protection. Somebody comes against you, just say, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echod. Hashem Hu Elokim Eina Milvadeh. There is no other God besides for God. That protects us. No negative spiritual forces or physical forces can touch us. <coughs> Excuse me. We don't go to sleep until we've eaten our prey. What is our prey? Our prey is the negative spiritual forces. When we say Hashem Echad, right before we go to sleep, right? It says they will not go to sleep until they have eaten their prey. It means. Before we go to sleep, we say, Hashem Lokeinu, Hashem Echad, Hashem is our God, Hashem is one. Ne'echol and Amachal Ponov. All of the negative spiritual forces are consumed in front of him. They say, Blessed is the name of God's, of God, the honor of God's kingship forever. Baruch and they run away. So, the person has protection all day long. We start off the day with a statement of God's kingship that protects us from the morning until the evening when we go to sleep and we finish off the day with the statement of Hashem, you are my king. Hashem, you are my God. I accept upon myself all of the mitzvahs. I will do all of the commandments. I want to bless you and I ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us that we should be able to recognize the power the power, the incredible spiritual power, the incredible physical power of keeping the Torah. We should be able to employ the tools. The Medrash is offering us an incredible tool. We use, we're, we're saying it anyway. Krishma, we say every single day, twice a day. Hashem should help us to be able to take the opportunity, to grab the opportunity like a lion. We're supposed to get up in the morning like a lion and grab the mitzvah of Machus Shemayim. Hashem should help us to be able to do so. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.